What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, this is Andy Nguyen and we've been hitting those uh, budget boards pretty dang hard lately. KBD67 Lite, AK68 Aurora, Valley 60, Freebird! But you know these aren't 75, the 75% budget board or entry level board more or less was the GMMK Pro, I mean there was ID80, it's the Keycon K1, the GMMK Pro Killer. I know y'all thinking that, I'm just saying it. ESPN, you know? But let's not do the GMMK Pro and Q1 boxing fight just yet. Let's talk about the Q1 by itself. So if you don't have time to watch full review, this is the Keychron Q1. This is a 75% gasket mounted keyboard. The gasket mount works. It's $169 with keycaps and switches. It's $149 bare bones with just a PCB in case. I like the price. I like the value. I like the layout. I like the aesthetic. It's clean. What I don't like is the hollowness and the pinginess of the case which requires a lot of modding. I still think it's a great option for beginners. If you want to know more about the nitty gritty of it, let's get into it. Uh, not sponsored, they just wanted me to review it because you know, they trust me, I think. In the box, there's everything that you need. You have a braided USB cable, you have a keycap puller and a switch puller. Some extra keycaps. You can change your key from alt to option, you know, for the Mac users out there. I, know, I like how the pre-built actually care about the Mac users when they include these keycap sets. Here's what you'll be waiting for, Keycon Q1. I was under embargo, so I couldn't really review it. But this here is an aluminum case, 75% keyboard with a top right blocker. Peep the badge. Uh, these keycaps that are included are ABS. It is a gasket mounted keyboard. And on paper, there's a lot of things that are going 1v1 against a GMMK Pro. Before we continue talking about the aesthetics though, the marketing for the Keychron Key 1 was much more fair. They didn't go so hard at the custom mechanical keyboard community. They said, this is what we're offering. This is now something that is more in tune with what enthusiasts want rather than non-enthusiasts that care about pre-builds. There is a pre-built option in case you kind of just want to have everything in one package without having to worry about buying switches, keycaps, and stabilizers. In terms of the aesthetic, you got some white and beige keycaps, a very universal color. This is the silver gray unit. The keycaps actually show what the functions are. So just like any other Keycon pre-built, there are special functions for the F row. In terms of the aesthetic, it's a very boxy, rectangular, angular shape. It's a very inoffensive aesthetic. But the thing that kills me with this is actually the legending on the keycaps. This is a very nitty gritty enthusiast thing, but we got to mention it. If you take a look at the keycaps, the legending is in the top right. This right here is a more ideal 75% layout because of the exploded afro, the exploded nav, and the offset arrows. The other compact version, which I showed in the Thera 75 video, that's just to compress, and you end up mispressing the afro and mispressing the arrows and all that. Having it exploded out and having space really does make a difference. Instead of just ragging on, I will say, in terms of the legending, I do like the font and it's pretty minimal. That's pretty much on brand with Keychron and their target customer base. All right, let's talk about the feel of this keyboard, right? So this is gasket mounted, and they really focused on making sure that their gasket implementation was actually gasket, actually bouncing, you could actually feel it. With the GMMK Pro, the gasket implementation was basically just a paper thing. Yes, there were gaskets, but they were so compressed and there was no space in the keyboard, you felt like you were typing into a brick. With the discussion of feel, we have to talk about how sound interacts with it. So this board right here, they went further and added some feel to it, right? Where it added the bounce, and to have bounce, basically you have to have more space underneath the PCB. What that means is when you press down, you can actually depress the PCB a little bit and actually feel that bounce. But when you have a void underneath the PCB, especially in a cheaper board, that kind of void space adds the hollowness. It adds that kind of distracting sound for some people. In this current build right now, I can't show you the bounce because I have modded the crap out of it and I filled up all the void. But in the stock configuration with one set of gaskets, they have another set of gaskets included in the box. It's very bouncy and you definitely feel the gasket, but the sound is less than stellar. The gasket implementation has a plate and as you sandwich between gaskets like it should be, so I actually like the feel of this board a lot. Now let's get into the sound department. Let's do the patented knock test. Doesn't sound too bad. So when you type into it, right now this is modded to hell, right? This has tape mod, which is tape underneath the PCB. This has pour on case foam and the included case foam. You can still hear hollowness. It's really bad in the right mods. You just heard the space press stop right there. The board does include screw and stabilizers and they're pretty good. Keychron put some R&D into making sure that the stabilizers were not utter crap. But are they as good as Durox? It's hard for me to tell because I usually wholly mod my stabilizers and because there's already factory grease on the wire, there's actually lube inside the stem already so I can't adhere a band-aid to it. I didn't see any lube on the stem and the housing so you still need to add lube there. So let's listen to the mods one more time. Here's the, here's the shift. Enter. Backspace. 
And of course, it's all sound testing in the air, so it's not as fair as being on a table in a desk mat. But here you can definitely hear that there's case reverb and the board does sound pingy, does sound hollow. There's no way to ignore it. There's two more mods that I haven't tried, which is the silicone pour and the PE foam. Those may help, but we are stacking a lot of modifications in this board. Compared to the GMMK Pro, I'd rather have a stock condition that has flexibility and has hollowness so that I can fix the hollowness. The GMMK Pro sounded flat and was stiff. I can do all the mods and I'm really not gonna be able to bring sound back. The key one, you can actually hear the sound of the switch. I actually like the sound of these Dojicons right here. But of course, there's hollowness. So modding experimentation has to be done considering the price point of this keyboard. It's $169 with ABS keycaps and Gateron switches, the full thing, and the stabilizers. And since you don't have to replace the stabilizers because they're actually serviceable, compared to the greatest of all time stabilizers, that's like $20. You have a coiled aviator cable, that's another $20. So this is a great value for what it is. And you'll have the foams included. Since my sound test, they're actually including an extra layer of foam for people who want to tune their keyboard that way. Now, if you don't care about the switches because they are more or less basic switches, you want to use your own switches and you don't care about these ABS keycaps, maybe you don't like the legending, you can get the bare bones kit for $149. So that's a 75% aluminum case, gasket mounted keyboard. We're used to just having a PCB in case if you're an enthusiast for $149. That is stupid cheap. I know it's hollow, but that's still stupid cheap. The Freebird 60 was $135, included PCB in case, right? The tried and true value keyboard, which is the Tofu 60, is a 60% case, aluminum case, and the cheapest option is $159 with the aluminum plate. So this is $149 for a bigger keyboard with a top right blocker, and there's customization in the blocker. So if you, can, you want to get other badges, this is a great value. Now we talked about the price, right? 169 to 149. To compare with other boards, we gotta talk about the 149 price point. Now we gotta compare it with the Satisfaction 75, the GMMK Pro. There it is 75 now. We have the ID80. The Satisfaction 75 is a custom enthusiast board and it really brought a lot of people into the hobby, but it was way more expensive and it's a group buy. The Thera 75 was also cheap at $260, but it's a GB, 149. We can't really compare the two. Now we compare this with its actual competitors, the ID80, all of its variants, the GMMK Pro, and now there's a very compelling offer. The GMMK Pro is $169. This is $149. There's a $20 price difference. Hollow pingy case. That's what you want to get away from if you're trying to go into customs. And then unfortunately, this has that. It's saving grace is the fact that it's $149, but you're going to have to mod it. Tape is cheap. PE foam is really not too expensive. You can get it in packaging. It's going to take some work, but so with the GMMK Pro. I like this board and I like that it exists for the people that do not like the GMMK Pro. Like I mentioned before, the GMMK Pro is stiff, so you can't really undo stiffness. As you start taking out elements, to try to save the sound, you'll introduce some of that hollowness back because there's always a push-pull relationship. In my other playlist boards, the Juby, the new, they both have hollowness in it. To my understanding, to get rid of all the hollowness, you typically eat into your fun typing experience with the gasket. So of the two, the GMK Pro or this, I'd rather have this assuming that one of the last two mods I'm gonna be trying tomorrow on stream, P foam, and tape mod, and silicone pour can save at least the hollowness of the spacebar. Also comparing this to the GMK Pro, the GMK Pro has very bad stock stabilizers. So you're gonna spend another $20. So $169, dollars you got to spend another $20 to get extra stabilizers. Now you're looking at $189 versus $149 with serviceable, usable stabilizers. For a beginner board, if you're absolutely stuck with 75 and you can't give up your F-Row, it's a, not a clear cut answer as to whether or not this is better than the GMK Pro. They both have their faults and they're both like larger companies trying to get into the custom mechanical keyboard market. Keychron is primarily pre-built. I know there's hot swap, but this is like their first foray into it. I feel like they can revise it and make it better. And that's just what happens when companies have their first iteration. The R1 is usually not the best. So I think this board represents something bigger. The bigger companies are willing to put money into R&D to make entry-level enthusiast-grade custom mechanical keyboards. I know the aftermarket is slowing down, but the budget category and the mid-level category of keyboards, whether they are customs or pre-built, that's heating up. The Keychron is accessible. The Keychron is affordable. The Keychron has the full kit as well as the bare bones kit, and it's offering at a great price. It's going to require modding, but honestly, 
that's part of the fun in the hobby. I say I hate the fact that you have to modify nicer keyboards, but I'm watching people modify $1,000 Matrix keyboards and putting freaking t-shirts inside. So I guess maybe I'm wrong. So my final thoughts, the Keychron Q1, is it a recommendation for me? I'd say so. For most people that have no idea and don't have any keyboard, this satisfies the desire to get into the custom mechanical keyboard world. It allows you to hear your switches. And I think a beginner board sounding a little bit hollow is acceptable. The pinginess is the thing I hate the most because it sounds like a freaking pan, dude. That's why you saw the sound test. I was trying to review it without using words. And I had to try to save the sound somehow. I like the fact that there's another option in the market for people who are trying to get a 75% entry level keyboard. Is it the best keyboard? No. Since Keychron is trying this, right? More companies may be willing to try to enter the market, create a product that is more in line with enthusiast grade custom mechanical keyboards. The more companies that do that, the more competition, the better product that the end user gets. Now it's gonna happen right away? No, but first we had Glorious, now we have Keychron. Who's next? Maybe Razer and Corsair will step up and make some really nice keyboards that you can buy from Best Buy. That would be amazing, right? So all in all, this isn't the best keyboard I've tried, but it does a lot of things right. And I'm excited for what's coming to the hobby. Now, is it the GMMK Pro Killer? I wouldn't say it smokes it, but it does make it feel a little irrelevant. <laughs>